We are born habitual by nature. In fact, we are habitual beings that can be easily programmed by what the society, our parents, and the environments from around us can introduce to us, or what we can introduce to our own selves as we grow a little bit older. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. This is your brother Wael Ibrahim, and insha'Allah ta'ala, in the next few episodes, we'll be talking about something really essential. Habits and addictions, and how can these two contribute to either our growth and spirituality and connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to our destruction. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. For now, what I want you to actually think about are the following questions. Have you ever thought about our regularity of performing the daily prayers, the five daily prayers, and why they are performed day in and day out, five times a day, with no exceptions? The only pillar that there is no exception about missing it is the Salah. You may not be able to perform Hajj, you may not be able to fast due to illnesses and so on and so forth. You may not be able to even pay the Zakah because you don't have the means. But Salah, whether it is cold or hot, whether you are sick or healthy, there is no exception. Why is that so? Have you ever thought of the words of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu the last words before he passed, As-Salah, As-Salah, why was it so essential for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu to make his last words, don't ever be neglectful of your Salah? The answer is a little bit obvious, but let us think deeper about it. The reason why the Prophet Sallallahu made it very, very essential, and Allah, of course, before anyone, made it absolutely the most important pillar of our deen, is that it, it becomes the protective method for us against all vices that we experience in today's society. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ Salah prevents you from committing illegal sexual activities and prevents you from falling into these sinful actions that are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Salah was meant to protect you in that fashion and it will not be protective unless it is performed day in and day out. Consistency. And that's what the habits that we want to bring to our lives entails my brothers, my sisters in Islam. And that's why also the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu told us, imagine if there is in front of you, in front of any of your homes, a river where you used to bathe in it five times a day. Will there be dirt left on you anymore by the end of the day? Naturally not. And this is the purpose of our Salah. It cleans you day in and day out, from Fajr to Dhuhr, from Dhuhr to Asr, consistently. Now, we, we are not suggesting here that we turn our Salah into a mere habit without the thoughts behind what we recite. Whenever we say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, we need to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is creating a conversation between Himself and between His slaves, us, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. The Prophet ﷺ told us that when we say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, praise be to Allah, the Lord of the world, Allah responds from above the heavens by saying, Hamadani Abidi, my slave have praised me. So we, we are not, we don't want to be robotically praying, but rather putting our hearts and thoughts into every word and into every verse of the Quran as we recite and as we worship Allah, because that is our main purpose in this dunya, is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, let me take you to the definition of habit so that we can be all on the same page, inshallah. What are habits really? Habits basically are these building blocks of our day-to-day -day activities. Whatever you do, on a regular basis, contribute to your character, contributes to, you, to your personality, and definitely contributes to your habits, those daily activities that you perform, uh, and seemingly sometimes they are small and insignificant, but on the long run they can contribute to something bigger, whether good or bad. Something very important to understand about habits is that they are not, they, they are neutral in concept. Like habits can be good, can be bad. So 
you have to make that choice by yourself that these are the activities that I wanted to keep in mind day in and day out until I meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٌ On that day, nothing will avail you. This dunya will never benefit you. Your wealth, your children, whatever you have accumulated in this dunya will never avail you, will never help you. إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٌ Except those who come to Allah with a pure heart. And no one will come to Allah with pure heart except with those who do righteous deeds. And these are the habits that we wanted to bring to our lives, insha'Allah ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu mentioned in one of the authentic narrations, Al-Khayru Ada wa Sharru Lajaja. Khayr or goodness is a natural habit. This is something very, very important and interesting for us to understand. Anything that is good and acceptable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is considered to be an attachment that produces, even scientifically speaking now, produces in your brain very useful chemicals and hormones that can actually assist you on performing well in all other aspects of your life. Al khayru ada, goodness is absolutely a natural habit. Was sharru lajaja, and evil actions are the result of the temptation of shaitan. So shaitan is out there to introduce to you these actions that will destroy you on the long run. So be absolutely careful. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, وَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرٍ And if Allah wanted for anyone goodness, فَلْيُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ Allah will make him understand or give him the depth of understanding of this beautiful religion of our, of Islam. And this is what we wanted to achieve. The more you know, they said, the more you grow. Warren Buffett, one of the billionaires, he said, the more you learn, the more you earn, right? But what we say, because learning, you know, learning in terms of the worldly business and sales and marketing, you know, all this related to the dunya, it's good and all, but it's not the main purpose of our existence. What we wanted to know is the deen of Allah that will bring us back to Him. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'un. We belong to Allah and to Him we shall return. Where are you going to return if you are stuck in habits that are displeasing to Him? Will you return to Him? Yes, you will, but uh, in, a, in a bad destination. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. One of the habits, for example, that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, introduced to himself was that he had like a mattress that he used to construct as a tent or a booth where he used to pray the night prayer within this, this tent. And in, during the day, he would spread it and relax and chill and so on. And when the Muslims around him knew about this, they started gathering around his home and in the Masjid of Medina to pray with him inside the tent. And then the Prophet ﷺ, it was too, too small, so how, how many people would fit in? So the Prophet ﷺ told him, Ya ayyuhan nas, O people, khudu min al-a'mali ma tutiqoon. Take on my behalf the actions that you can bear. This is something absolutely essential. I remember I was in Hong Kong City where we had this little organization. I used to teach classes every Sunday. And one Saturday in particular, we taught about Qiyamul Layl, Tahajjud, the night prayers, and how important it is. And how the Prophet ﷺ said that the best of all prayers after the obligatory is Qiyamul Layl. Anyway, on Sunday morning, I went to the center and I'm opening the door and it was locked from inside. I was wondering, I tried to open the door, it was locked. I knocked the door. And I heard a voice of a sister from inside telling me, wait, her voice was a little bit sleepy. And after she opened the door, it was obvious that she was sleeping in, in the center. I asked, well, what happened? Why were you sleeping here? I said, sorry, brother, because we were praying Qiyamul Layl after you finished the workshop. I say, Allahu Akbar, MashaAllah, all these prayers are now in the scale of my good deeds. Takbir. But, but again, why were you sleeping? She said, because we were praying 100 rak'ah. Say, Allahu Akbar, 100 rak'ah, and guess what? They missed out Fajr. They prayed Qiyamul Layl because they got motivated, but they miss out the obligatory, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala imposed on them. So take, as the Prophet said in that hadith, take from the actions of the Prophet وسلم, what you can bear. You don't have to go for 100 rak'ah if you cannot. Start with two. 
and then add to them another two and so on and so forth. Whatever you can perfect, that what we wanted to achieve insha'Allah ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us this ability of starting an action and consistently continue in that action until we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, خَيْرُ الْأَعْمَالِ أَدْوَمَهَا وَإِنْقَلْ Or أَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَدْوَمَهَا وَإِنْقَلْ The most beloved actions to Allah are those consistent actions, even if they are little. Inshallah ta'ala, in the next episode, we'll introduce to you a few tips and tricks on how to break free from ill habits or habits that could lead to a destructive end. Ameen ya Rabbil Ameen. May Allah protect us all from such habits. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.